Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon. How are you doing? Hope you're having a great day. We're all here, and we're happy to be here. All right, let's get this thing rocking and rolling. Where am I? Boom. There we are. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Welcome back. It's Thursday. It's almost Friday. It was a short week for me. I, I don't know about you guys. Let me do this up looking inappropriate here. All right, here we go. Uh, so, shout outs. Let's do, let's say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to everybody. Gertie, number one, what's up? Dana, hello, Lolly. What's up? My crew is here. Gozia, hello, Gozia. Uh, who, I try to teach English every day. I think that's what I do. Uh, Edgar's in the house. What's up, man? Milky Way, hello, Milky Way. Marcin, Judith, what's up, Judith? English learning, good idea. Na, 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 na. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Stanislav, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Agnaldo, hey, from Brazil. What's up, brother? Uh, Wafa Wafa, I love that name, great name. Uh, do do do, scrolling. Zara's back, hello Zara, what's up? Uh, Marcin, yes. Man, the chat's growing, that's cool, I like it. Rosa's in the house, what's up Rosa, how you doing? Um, boop, 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 boop. Adele, yes. I'm getting back into it, you can see I'm not back to my, my normal crazy self yet, but I'm working on it, I'm getting there. Munir, hello. Ziad, what's up, my brother? Marjorie, what's up, Marjorie? She's back. All right, cool. I think I, Rita, what's up? I don't want to miss anybody. Thank you guys for showing up today. Ali, what's up? How you doing? Boo, 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 boo. All right. Okay. Oh, you don't want to get married. Uh, hi, Ken. I don't want to get married and live rich. Yeah, that would be horrible, right? It'd be a horrible situation. Okay, so here's what we're going to talk about today. If, if you've seen it, uh, it's in the background there. The topic of today is marriage. Let's, let's warm up, shall we? Let's look, at, let's look at some marriage. Let's see what marriage looks like. Marriage. Let's take a look, shall we? Well, there's that guy. Okay, we got a little bit of that. Okay. Oh, look at that. That's, that's pretty detailed. That might be in some of the questions that you're about to get there. What else we got here? Marriage. Got all these things. We got a lot of so a lot of vocab is popping. I want some marriage for. Oh well, what about this? Ten things you should never say to your spouse. Hmm. Might talk a little bit about that. Pros and cons of marriage. Hmm. Ball and chain. Oh, I never even thought about that one. Interesting. Trying not to. Uh, I'm trying to give you the appropriate stuff. The the modern stuff. The 2018. So I'm taking out some stuff. We're not going to talk about everything. But if you have questions, of course we'll talk about it. Okay, so this is the topic of today. We're going to talk about good marriages or maybe, let's see, what have we got? Oh, I, that's why I searched. I had marriage vocab. I don't want marriage vocab. I just want pictures of marriage. We got these things here. What are those things called? We got this going on. What's happening here? Oh, look at this. This is a, looks, looks like an Indian marriage, which I've heard is crazy because the party lasts for like seven days. Uh, am I married? No, I'm not married. Still single at the moment. Uh, but I feel like next weekend, it might be my weekend. It's, I feel like it's coming soon. What's going on here? We're going to talk about a lot of this stuff today. We're going to talk about some vocab that we use to talk about marriage. And maybe we'll get into some discussion questions as well. I haven't really thought about that. But today we're going to look at different types of marriage, uh, things that can go right during a marriage, and things that can go wrong during a marriage as well. So let's jump into it, and let's give you a discussion question to warm you up. The first question is this, uh, and it is, how do you feel about marriage? What do you think about marriage? Some of you guys are going to be married already, and some of you guys are going to be super close, and some of you guys are super far away. So give us your opinion. Uh, what do you think about that? And let me share that document with you. That's what I forgot to do, because this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do a lot of vocab today, talking about marriage. So that's the first one. So there you go, there's the document. If you're new, please open that document and you'll have everything that I have on my screen and you'll have access to any new vocab that we learned today. All right, so here we go, let's jump in. Let's talk about it. It's the big question, right? So how do you feel about marriage? First question, question of the day is that. So give me your opinion, some of you guys are married. Tell me what you think and let's get into it. Do this, got the first one. Being in marriage is a big challenge due to the fact that, oh, very nice, I like it. Uh, being in a marriage is a big challenge due to the fact that there are too many divorces. 
Okay, interesting. Well, uh, explain that a little bit more, dude. What do you mean? Why why is marriage a challenge? Because there are so many divorces. So interesting sentence, but explain a little more. Uh, next one, Marwan. How can I find a native English partner for speaking? The internet, Marwan. I suggest going on the internet. I'm sure these days it's pretty modern. You can probably use Skype or something like that. And there's a there's a just search um, English tutor. Just search this on Google and you'll find a million websites. English tutor online. And you'll find a million websites, Marwan, where you can find an English tutor. Uh, let's keep going here. Uh, graveyard of love. Interesting, interesting view there, Harry. What does that mean, graveyard of love? It might be an idiom that I don't know. If you, if you got one, explain it. Zara. It is the life. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? It's like it is life, like that's what happens, or you mean like it's the thing to do? What does that mean? Uh, I don't want to get married. Okay. Uh, Kent looks like better in direct than on stream. You're probably right, Gertie. Probably right about that. Uh, next one. What else we got? Mm -hmm. Strong relationship. Mm, marriage is the golden cage. Oh my goodness. For males and females. Interesting. Uh, what else we got? First thing that comes to mind when hearing the word marriage is responsibility. That's why I don't like it. Yes, it definitely has a little more responsibility to it than being single, right? Uh, what else we got here? Marcin says, I have found it for many times and I have not found. So I have looked, I have looked for marriage many times, but I have not found it, okay? Uh, what else? Rosa, sometimes I don't sleep at night because I start thinking about the responsibilities waiting for me. Oh my goodness. Is he the right man or not? Is he going to change after marriage? Oh my goodness. All these questions spring into my mind. Oh my goodness. That's, that's some deep thoughts you're having there, Rosa. Uh, let's do another one here. Marriage puts, uh, marriage creates, creates a lot of pressure. But is it worth it? It depends. Dale, marriage is a huge responsibility. Therefore, think carefully before going for it. Okay, good advice. Be ready for compromises. Yeah, that's, let's add some vocab because sometimes I forget to do that these days because there's so many people and so many things to talk about. Uh, compromise. Compromise is a word. So let me... Uh, there's a few words at the bottom which might come in useful for you later. Compromise means uh, you have to like negotiate, right? You have to, uh, I will, you know, some things I want, I can get, but something, sometimes I have to change what I do for my partner. So compromise, similar to negotiate. Mm, uh, lose some things. <sighs> negotiate. I'll put it as negotiate. It's kind of similar to that. Okay, cool. Very nice. Uh, compromise. So there's the word, a good word, compromise. You, I have to stop doing some things for my partner, right? That would be compromise. Good word. Uh, what else we got here? It is good to have someone to be together with and enjoy life with, but sometimes it is hard to live with someone because of their, their different thoughts. Okay, that's true. Uh, Adil, uh, marriage is the second life for humans. I'm not sure what that means. That sounds like a translation. Uh, but yeah, explain it a little bit more and maybe we can translate it into English. Uh, it is, yeah, there we go. Uh, Bujema says, it is the bond, B-O-N-D. It is a bond, a connection. Oh, that's a good word as well. So sometimes we use this word, a bond, uh, which basically means a connection. So a bond between pe two people. So a bond, connection, good word. Awesome. All right, cool, very nice. So let's jump in, let's jump in and let's do a few questions. And today I'm gonna challenge you and how much do you know about marriage in English? So I'm, of course I'm using kind of our English context, right? So uh, for me, North America, right? How do we get married? What happens during those things? Uh, but if you guys introduce some new words, maybe your culture is a little bit different, feel free, throw, throw in some new words. Maybe you can teach us something about uh, how marriage works in your family. All right, so here's the first question. It's literally gonna test your vocabulary today. How much do you know? Who are some people who are often involved in a marriage ceremony? And what are they called? They have special names, okay? So I want you to think of all the people who are usually people, people only, who are usually involved in this process. So let's, let's write them down because there's a bunch. 
I'm going to put this on my list below. So people involved in the wedding ceremony. So what do we have? Yes, we have a bride, the woman who's going to get married. We call her a bride. The woman, the woman to get married. And if you have a bride, you also have a groom, which is the man, or a man, the man to get married. Okay, good. Maid of honor. You have a maid of honor. So this is, in my culture, if the woman, if we have a woman and she's getting married, sometimes she chooses like one other woman to be her most important partner. You know, a maid of honor. A maid of honor. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. An important woman. The most important. An important woman. You might have to Google some of this stuff because I can't think of how to explain it. An important woman in the wedding ceremony. Usually a friend or a family member. Uh, if you have a maid of honor, then you also have, correct, a best man. And the best man is kind of the other side. So if there's a man and he's getting married, he has one person on his side, maybe a friend or family member. We call this person the best man. Maybe they have some duties like giving the ring or something like that. So we also have a best man important man in the wedding ceremony. Okay, what else we got? Uh, maid of honor, yes, best man, groom, relatives, yes, you would have relatives. You would have uncles and aunties and cousins and everybody coming to see the big day. Finally, this person's getting married. My God, it took only 20 years, right? Uh, family members, extended family members. Boom. Uh, yes, you would have, in some cultures, you're going to have a priest, uh, right? If you, if, you are, if you are religious and you go to a church, Christian, you would have a priest. Um, okay, and I think you know that person, holy man. Okay, uh, you also have, if you have a priest, but you don't, if you don't want to have a religious marriage, it's not a priest, it's, uh, what's the name of the guy? Uh, a minister? No. It, maybe someone can help me with this. I'll try to figure it out. Is it a minister? Is it a judge? What is, it's not a judge. Who is it? Is it a judge? A lawyer? Oh, I forget. Anyways, you know what I'm talking about. There's another one. So if you get married in a church and it's a holy religious ceremony, you have a priest. But sometimes you don't. Some people don't want to do that and they get married outside. And it's a different person, but I can't think of the name right now. So anyways, groom, a wedding planner. Yes, you would also have a wedding planner. Who's going to do the? Who's going to decide what the wedding looks like? What the music's going to be like? Definitely going to have a wedding planner. Mm -hmm. Someone who designs the wedding, organizes wedding events and all events, you know, like around the wedding. Okay, priest engage mother-in-law. Sure, a mother-in-law. And if you have a mother-in-law, of course, you're going to have a father-in-law. I think everybody knows those words, right? So when you get married, you get a second mother. That's your mother-in-law. Your partner's mother. And your partner's father. Good. Judge. It might be a judge. Uh, yeah, and sometimes you do have a witness. You're right. Somebody like a contract somebody has to watch you sign the papers so a person who watches the signing of the wedding like when you register uh, a witness would be someone who watches someone who watches the signatures the signing process of marriage papers marriage documents Boom. Okay, what else? In-laws, yeah, so mother-in-law, father-in-laws, in-laws, marriage officer, good question. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Depends on the mother-in-law, Rodrigo. I think some, some are tougher than others. A reverend would be another way to say priest, so let's add that there. A reverend, so that's another way. The holy person, the holy person. 
at a church. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, some of those are good words. They're not about people, but uh, anything else? Okay, we're, we've got a lot of vocabulary, and we're gonna get we're gonna get to some of the things we use in a wedding. My quiz is designed to get a little bit harder as we go along. Uh, so a marriage officer might be the person. Okay, let's jump ahead. Let's go to number two here. Number two. Some of these will be easy, but they're going to get harder. So maybe you don't, maybe you know this, but they are kind of essential vocabulary we used to talk about uh, weddings. Yes, as well, Edgar, you got that as well. A civil union. So a civil union is when two people of the same sex get married. We call it a civil union. I don't know why it's different, but I call it a civil union. Okay. Yes, correct. Bouquet is the answer. A bouquet. We stole the word from the French people because this, it sounds so cool when you say it with a French accent, so it's bouquet. The flowers thrown by the the flowers thrown at a wedding. Cheap flowers. I don't know if they're cheap. I'm sure they're more expensive. Justice of the peace could be justice of the peace definition and maybe this is it a magistrate appointed to hear minor cases perform marriage okay I think we got the answer there so a person who is not a priest or a reverend would be a justice of the peace I think there's more ways to say it but that's definitely one way a justice of the peace a civil person, civil person, who performs marriages. Okay, very nice. Bucket, a bucket. Uh, all right, good. Let's go ahead. Let's get into some of the harder questions here. Maybe you guys know this one already, but we're getting, we're getting harder every time. Number three, what do you call a man who has never been married? Babu. Oh, Lolly's on it already. She's ahead. Correct answer is a bachelor. And I guess you could say a bachelorette uh, for a woman. Uh, you could say a bachelor. Uh, let's, we'll put it in there because this word is going to come up a little bit later. So I think you can also say a bachelorette. I don't know how to spell lorette. Why is my spelling so bad today? Bachelorette. I think we stole the French again. So I'm going to do that. A single a man or woman who has never married. Boom. Very nice. Bachelor. Yep. And there's a TV show. A bachelor and a spinster. Really? A spinster for a woman? That's a new one for me. A spinster. An unmarried woman. Typically an older woman. Oh my. Oh, typically an older woman beyond the usual age. So some woman who's getting older. So it's a, maybe it's a little bit different than a bachelorette. A spinster. Oh, there's a new word I learned today. A spinster. An older woman who has never been married. Who has never married. Interesting. There we go. Learn something new every day. Very nice. Okay, moving on. What do we got here next? Uh, okay, this is a little bit off topic, but uh, well, it's not off topic, it's totally on topic. But here, what are some bad things that can happen during a marriage? So, after the marriage ceremony, you're married, what are some bad things that can happen? Of course, there's going to be some things, so we got to talk about it. So, what are some bad things that could happen during a marriage? So, after you are married, something bad happens. What could it possibly be? Let's talk about that. Number one, yes, correct. Cheat on someone. So if your partner uh, has another partner when you are married, of course, that we call that cheating on someone. Uh, so that's a phrasal verb we use in English. Uh, when married, when in a serious relationship, having another partner, having another partner, having another partner with, without your partner's knowledge. I don't know how to explain that. You know what I mean, right? So you got two people, they're in a serious relationship, but this person has another person 
and this person doesn't know. They're like, oh, I didn't know. Uh, I guess I guess they could know, but anyways, that's the idea. When you cheat on someone, uh, what else can we have here? Yes, you can get a divorce as well. Of course, you get divorced. Usually, this is how we say it. Get divorced, so it's a verb. When you separate, and there's other ways to say that. You you get divorced, you split up, you break up. But usually, divorced is the official one where you sign the paper, right? So there we go. Could get divorced. Officially end marriage, terminate. There we go, affairs. Uh, usually we say in English, have an affair. So basically, it's like cheating, uh, cheating on someone. Um, so we'll just copy that definition there. Having an affair, same idea. You have a partner, but then you have another partner, but it's not a good thing. That's, uh, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, getting some long ones here. Looking for kind of like one or two words. Oh, that's a good one. Drift apart. Very nice, Manera. Drift apart. Uh, so I guess that would be a phrasal verb. Um, slowly, you know, like that. Slowly, how do you slowly lose connection? slowly lose connection to each other right when some people some people it happens kind of naturally like some people grow and they kind of one person goes this way, one person goes that we call this drift apart almost like you're in the ocean and you're kind of moving like that uh, what is a dowry good question Gertie that's a great one let's do that I forgot what it I think it's about money a dowry is it about money property or money brought by a bride oh interesting to her husband on their marriage is this an old thing so basically it says property it could be like a house or it could be money which the bride brings to the husband on their marriage this could be an old thing it, it might be an old way of getting married when somebody brought something uh all right let's let's keep this one a little bit lighter here but uh what else we got uh, no, 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 no. There's a couple more. Have an affair. I was looking for divorce. Uh, cheat on someone. Do I have any more? Did I write anything else down? No, I think that's all I wanted. Uh, nope, that's about it. Okay. Dowry still exists. Okay, so there you go. Dowry still exists. Uh, all right, so let's go ahead. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, we did that. Number five. This is a good one because this will talk about some of the things which happen around a wedding. So number five is this. What are some parties? Sometimes we, it's a party, sometimes it's an event, sometimes it's an activity which are usually connected to marriage. So maybe before the marriage, maybe after the marriage, maybe during the marriage. What are some parties, events, or activities which are usually connected to the marriage ceremony? Mm -hmm. Henna celebration. Okay, interesting. Faiza, you might have to explain a henna. There we go. Baby shower. That's the one I was looking for. Maybe Faiza, can you explain a henna celebration? I know what henna is, but I don't really know how to do it. So a baby shower is when uh, you have a party for the woman who's going to get married, right? Um, and usually I think they bring gifts for the woman who's going to get married with the expectation that there's going to be a baby. Is it a baby shower? Yeah. That's for babies. A wedding shower? Is there a wedding shower? I'm not very good at this. I'm not married. Wedding shower? A bridal, ah, there we go. A bridal shower. That's what, that's why it's not a baby shower. It's a bridal shower, of course. The bride has a bridal shower. So a party for the woman to be, party for the woman before she is married. Okay, good. A bachelor party, yes. And we have different names for bachelor parties. Maybe Rodrigo can help us out with the Australian way. A bachelor party is a party for the guys. So if you have a bachelor party, of course you can have a bachelorette party, but we also have other names for these. Uh, bachelorette, bachelor, how do you spell it? Damn. Bachelor, that's what I want. E-L-O-R-E-E. -E. 
B-A-C-H-E-L-O-R-E-T-T-E. -E. A bachelorette party. Okay, good. A party for men or a man or woman before married. So a bridal shower usually gifts, right? And a bachelorette party is usually crazy. So uh, before a woman is married, usually, usually gifts are brought. Important difference here, right? So for a bridal shower, you usually bring a lot of gifts. And for a bachelorette party, you just bring a lot of craziness. Maybe there's some drinking involved. Uh, usually a crazier party. Sometimes, let's, let's take a look, shall we? Let's take a look at a, a bachelorette party. All right, let's just see what we got. A bachelorette. And what kind of stuff might happen. And let's look at some gifts, shall we? Let's see what might happen at a bachelorette party. Okay. Mm a little Beyonce. That might happen. A little bit of Beyonce dancing with a drink in hand. That could happen at a bachelorette party. This could happen. This girl's pretty funny. I've seen her in a few movies. Uh, what else we got here? Oh my goodness. What if the bachelorette party theme were sluts? Please Google that if you're interested to know what that means. Okay, very nice. And this is possible. This might also happen at <laughs> the bachelorette party. So at an awesome bachelorette party, that could happen as well. Very nice. Okay, we've looked at it. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got that. We got a bachelorette party. We got a bachelor party. What other kinds of parties? A widow party is uh, not really about weddings, is it? What, an engagement party, yes. Engagement party. So basically, a party, right? Because you are going to get married, you have a party. I guess it's for both people. An engagement party. Still on the, no. Oh. Is a party held to celebrate a couple. Okay, so it's a party for both people. A party for both the bride and groom. Ah, and I forgot some words that I wanted to do earlier. Um, okay, whoa, whoa, easy guys, easy, come on. Uh, a bridesmaid luncheon, oh my goodness, I guess you could have a luncheon. Um, honeymoon, don't forget honeymoon, right? Of course you're gonna have honeymoon, it's an activity, it's an event that's gonna happen after the wedding, of course. Uh, holiday for the married couple. Uh, sorry, an engagement party, a party for the couple. I live in Vancouver, so I'm going to use the more neutral term, couple, to be married, not man and woman. Uh, holiday for the married couple. Boom. And the one that I, we forgot before, and uh, maybe somebody mentioned it, fiancé. Uh, fiancé, fiancé. Your fiancé is the person who you're going to get married to. We also steal... Uh, the French word, so let's add that because I don't think I added that one. A maid of honor, a bride, a groom, a fiance. So basically, the people who are going to get married, uh, the person you, the person who is engaged to be married. You're going to get married, that's you say, Oh, that's my fiance, we're going to get married next year or whatever. Okay, very nice. Honeymoon, good. Birthday party, not really about weddings, Ollie, but good job. There we go, fiancé, yeah, F-I-A-N-C-E-E. -E. Uh, easy there, Rodrigo, easy, big guy. Okay, uh, let's go to the next one here. All right. This one's going to get a little bit harder. Number six. Number six, what do you call a couple who has recently been married? Only one answer for this one, so maybe you know it, maybe you don't. Newlyweds, Dale, you got it, very nice. Just married, yeah, you could say they are just married, uh, kind of like an adjective, but you could also say newlyweds, very nice. Good answer, newlyweds. Like, wed is, you can use we wedding as a verb, wed, they wedded. We don't really do it very often, but, but you could say newlyweds. So basically, uh, a couple recently married, we say, oh, look, they are newlyweds, or whatever. Good, very nice. Dale in the game. 
Uh, what else we got here? No, good, good. Number seven. And two people get married. No. Well, oh yeah, here we go. Yeah. Maybe you guys know this one. Number s ah, Rosa is already on it. Number seven. Yes. When two people get married, they say some words to each other. What are those words called? We call them vows, uh, or wedding vows. Um, wedding vows. So we say take your vows, like take your wedding vows or say your wedding vows, right, when you get married. Um, promises, they're usually promises. Anyways, words you say uh, during the marriage ceremony to your partner. Cool. All right, and last one. Uh, Yep, here we go. Last one, number eight. Let's see who's got it. Let's see if you can do this one without the benefit of the internet. Uh, sometimes women have a small and transparent, like you can see through, uh, fabric which covers their face before. Oh, Dale. Okay, Dale's got it. Which covers their face. So let me show you a picture. This is a wedding veil. This is a wedding veil. Uh, this is what it looks like. This thing. Some women wear this, right? And it kind of covers the face, and then you kind of do it up like that. Fedor, what's up, brother? There we go. Uh, so it's called a veil. And tiara is like the little, you know, the little crown kind of thing. Yeah. Fedor's in the house. What's up? Everybody's excited. Uh, a veil. Yeah. There's a couple other words as well, uh, which I didn't get into, but that's fine. Uh, this one didn't want to focus too much on that. So a veil. Thin and transparent fabric which covers a woman's face. All right, very nice. Okay, so we've gone through that. We've we've hopefully we've expanded your uh, your vocabulary about weddings, or just did a little extra there. So now what I like you guys to do, I'm going to give you a few examples of some idioms that we use to talk about marriage, and I should add love. Because it's actually hard to find a lot of marriage idioms, but we can find a lot about love. So here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to do this. I would like you to look at the following. I, I've got some idioms here. i got three idioms for you. So I would like you to read the idiom and then try to tell us what does the idiom mean. So here's number one. Uh, you say something like this. I'm not sure about those two, those two people, right, the, that couple. So let's change it. I'm not sure about that couple. Their marriage may be on the rocks. What does it mean if your marriage is on the rocks or your relationship is on the rocks? What does that mean? Uh, what do you think? Correct. In trouble, failing, having problems, basically. If, you say, if you're on rocks, it's kind of difficult to stand, right? Because your feet are all slipping. So it's, it's not at the end, it's just having trouble. If you say your marriage is on the rocks or my relationship is on the rocks. Uh, on the rocks could also be the way you like your whiskey or your vodka on the rocks. Also good. Number two, I'd like to fix my friend up with him. What do you think? All right, I'm making these a little bit difficult for you just to put some challenge in there. I'd like to fix, fix my friend up with him. What do you think? Oh, Judith has got this one already. Get to know each other. Yes. Correct. Pretty much right. Make a connection. To make a connection. Yes. Set them up. Ahmed, you got it. Very nice. You want to put this friend and this friend together because you think, oh, they're going to be, I think they would be good together. So you are playing matchmaker, right? You're like, oh, I got this friend. Would be perfect for you. That's going to be amazing. I'm going to fix you up with her or him or whatever and it's going to be awesome. So fix someone up means like introduce them together. Next one, number three, last one I got because like I said it's hard to find uh, idioms about marriage specifically. Last one, did you hear about Jim? Jim. Yeah, he got cold feet, too bad. I didn't really put a lot of information here but what do you think it means when you get cold feet? Not to decide about something important, no, not quite. Made a wrong decision about what? 
Faiza. Afraid of what, Lolly? Nervous about what, Harry? Correct answer. Gertie's got it. When you are afraid to get married, you get cold feet. Uh, it's running. And it's like you want to run away from the marriage. So if you get cold feet, it basically means you become nervous, uh, usually on a wedding day. Do you get cold feet in any other situation? Usually just we use it just for weddings most of the time. So you, you're not... It's like you're not prepared to get married. You get cold feet. Sounds like you want to run away. And there's one more word which I wanted to introduce to you, which I forgot. Um, another thing you can do. Um, oh, I didn't talk about this. No, that's fine. Um, here's what we're going to do. So now it's your turn. I want you to do this. And I want you to find some new idioms for us to talk about. I want you guys to go onto the internet and I want you to search some idioms about marriage. It's going to be difficult and love. And I want you to come back and show us what did you find. I want to learn I want to learn some new idioms about marriage or love. So go ahead, go into internet land, go to Google and search idioms about marriage or idioms about love. Both are both are fine. As long as we can connect them to the topic today, we're good. Rose has got it already. Tie the knot. Uh, tie the knot. Let's let's do a little gif of tie the knot, shall we? What is tie the knot? It basically means this is a knot and you tie the knot just like that that's kind of a knot but it basically means get married so if you look at this I think no it's literally showing knots it's not really showing marriage <sighs> this is not happening this is not happening uh, okay anyways tie the knot means get married that's what it actually means so let's add that one to the list so you don't always have to say get married you could say oh my friends my two friends or one of my friends tied the knot last month. Tie the knot is an idiom which means get married. Very nice. Mm -hmm. What else we got? On cloud nine. Okay, Rodrigo, that's, that one's not bad. It's like when you're feeling amazing. I'll be honest, nobody ever says that in English. I know like one guy who might actually say that, but I've never said it. So I'm not sure it's super popular. Pop the question, absolutely. Pop the question, what is the question? And why does it pop? Pop the question just means uh, ask somebody to marry you. So pop the question basically means will you marry me? So it means say will you marry me? Ask someone to marry them, All right? So, oh, last week my friend popped the question to his girlfriend or a boyfriend of eight years finally he popped the question he asked her or asked him to get married very nice good one so you don't have to say propose you can say pop the question also a good one apple of my eye eh, i'm gonna say not too popular Ed edgar that one love at first sight could be could be i oh, i hesitate to put that one i don't know if anybody says love at first sight anymore but uh, Sure. Love at first sight, basically meaning, sorry, they're all idioms. Love at first sight means instantly love someone when you see them. Okay, what else we got? A match made in heaven, that's a good one. Uh, oh, find Mr. Right, to be hooked. Not bad, to be hooked. Hooked on someone, could be. Uh, find Mr. Right. That's a good one, I like that one. Because it's all about marriage, right? So find Mr. Right means, I guess you could say find Mrs. Right, but we usually use it for guys. I don't know why we don't use it for girls. Find the perfect uh, husband. No, find the perfect guy, Mr. Right. And I guess you could use Mrs. Right, but we usually just use Mr. I don't know why. What else we got here? Uh, Mr. Right, Apple, lovey-dovey. Sure, let's do lovey-dovey. So we use this one sometimes when you're like, oh, look at those two over there. They're, they're always hugging. They're always kissing. They look so lovey-dovey. It's just like they look so in love. So lovey-dovey. When a couple, usually a couple, appears, looks in love, looks very in love. Okay, lovey-dovey. 
Uh, what else we got here? Head over heels. Break the ice, love at first sight. Another half orange. A white marriage. Not sure <laughs> what that is. A shotgun marriage. Uh, I won't put that on the list, but a shotgun marriage is like, uh, imagine a long time ago. Let's let's see a picture, shall we? Shotgun marriage would look something like this. So basically, this guy, he needs to get married to that woman there, usually because she's pregnant or something like that. So the father would stand there with a gun and make sure <laughs> that the wedding happens. That would be a shotgun marriage. Uh, there we go. Okay. This is, this is the basic idea, right? You will marry, uh, she shouldn't, yeah, you get it. Shotgun marriage would be like that. That's a weird shotgun, man. Not sure what's happening over here. That's not really that traditional. That's a little bit weird, but it's kind of funny. It's like a theme wedding. All right, very nice. Uh, what else we got? Bend over backwards. A match made in heaven. That's a good one. A match made in heaven. Basically means they are perfect together. The couple is... The people are perfect for each other. People are perfect for each other. Good. Uh, those three little words, madly in love, head over heels in love. Yes, all of those, settle down, settle down, yeah, could be. Tie the knot, we did have a crush. Those three little words, yeah, so I, I want, maybe I, we don't use that one too often, but those three little words are I love you. So there you go. Marriage made in heaven, the poor guy happily ever after. Love is blind is so popular in my country. Interesting. Yeah, it's a good expression. Is it about not about marriage more about love is blind? What does it mean? Love is blind. Love is blind. Love makes you crazy? I think that's the meaning of love is blind, right? You get blinded by love. So basically you don't do things you don't think clearly when you're in love, right? I believe that's what it is, definition. Oh, no. I'm totally wrong. We use it in a nicer way, shall we say, less attractive. Oh. Love is blind. Let's see what Miriam says. Love is blind. Used to say, oh, okay, so when you love somebody, you don't care about the bad things that they do. Ah, uh, okay, of course. Okay, so you love somebody, they make, your partner makes mistakes, but you don't care. You don't see the mistakes because you love that person. Love is blind. When you love someone, even though they make mistakes or have problems or something like that. Okay, very nice. All right, so I think I think we've done a pretty good job. Anything else, idioms that we can use? Virtual marriage, not sure about that. Love at first sight, okay, yeah, we got that one. Be an item, it's more about dating than about marriage, but okay, let's do that, let's put that on, that's a good one. Be an item means when you are, you become a couple. Uh, so be an item means you are in a relationship. You are officially in a relationship. You are an item. They are an item. They are together. Okay, perfect. Very nice. So I think the last thing I got planned for you today is a little bit of fun. All right, so let's go down. If you scroll down here, what I have for you, and I'll put this in the chat here, is I have a quiz for you. And so basically, this is, let me set this up. Here's what we're going to do with the last little bit of time. Here it is. Are you already married? Are you thinking about what kind of person you should marry? Take the quiz below and find out who your perfect match really is. All right. So this is some of you are married. Some of you are thinking about getting married. So this is a quiz which is going to help you to know which person you should marry. So let me send you this link if you don't have it already. And let's do this quiz together. Okay. So click on that link. And you're going to go to another website, and we're going to do this quiz together. Uh, hopefully, you can swing between your phone and the website. So here we go. Let's jump into this BuzzFeed quiz. They do some kind of funny stuff. So this quiz is called, Who Should You Marry? 
Uh, so I would like you to do this quiz at the same time as I'm doing it. Uh, there's a few questions here, and you basically just need to work through the questions. So starting with number one. Question number one is, uh, what are you looking for? What do you want in your partner, right? in your boyfriend or girlfriend? Is it trust, kindness, sense of humor, the person's funny, teamwork, working together, intelligence, a smart person, or compa compatibility, your life and their life kind of go together well. So what, what would I be searching for? Trust, kindness, sense of humor. Sense of humor is definitely important. Um, or compatibility. Whoo, that's a tough one. Teamwork, intelligence, humor, or compatibility. I'm going to go compatibility because I think it includes humor. That's my first one. Number two. What are you really looking for? So basically, you were lying. <laughs> you were lying about the first one. First one says, "What are you looking for?" And number two says, "What are you really looking for? What are you truly looking for in a partner? Is it money? Be you know, a nice butt, a nice, a nice backside, a hot face, sexual napalm, so good sexual connection, enabler, so somebody who helps you to do things you want or right? They allow you, or love." Money, nice butt, hot face, sexual connection, enabler, someone who allows me to do bad things that I want to do, or love. I'm going to go with love. I'm going to go with the tr traditional answer because I'm too old to mess around. You know what I mean? So I'm going straight for it. Question number three. Well, yeah, all of them, all of them, right? How do you feel about love? What's your feeling about love? Is it stupid? Is it dumb? Is it nice? Is it... Uh, I love it, get it, I love love, get it, right, understand, I love love, it's all you need, so basically it's everything you need, it's a lie, and I can't feel, <laughs> I have no feelings, oh, okay, so let's see, I'm going to say it's nice, right, because I think it's a nice thing, that's my answer, you go ahead and you choose your own answer, whatever you want, do it, do it on your own. I'm going to scroll down to the next one. Nice. Yeah, it is nice. That's what I said. It's nice. It's a nice thing. Is it everything? I don't know. I just thought it's a big one, right? It's like everything. But okay, you choose your answer. I choose mine. What would you do for love? Uh, anything. I would do anything for love. I would do nothing for love. I'm super lazy. I don't want to do anything. I would kill someone for love. Oh my God. Please don't kill anyone. Make sacrifices so I would change my lifestyle for my partner. I would be a better person for my partner. And I would stop a wedding. I don't understand why that's there. Stop a wedding? Why would you stop a wedding? What would you do for love? Anything, nothing, kill, make sacrifices, or be a better person. I think it's one of those two for me. Make sacrifices, be a better person. I think I would be a better person because if you love that person and you're not... You have a few things which could be better. You would want to improve those things. But, or is it make sacrifices? Oh, it's a tough one. What do you guys think? I'm not sure. Make, yeah, make sacrifices sounds good to me. Be a better person, and but you only get one. Oh, I'm going to go with make sacrifices because I think if I have a partner, that partner is going to accept me for who I already am. So I don't have to change myself too much. Oh, I don't know. Just choose one. It's just fun. How would you describe your love life? Oh my goodness. Funky, a little bit crazy. A nightmare, oh my god, terrible. Pretty weird, unusual, strange. Non-existent, no love life. Ups and downs, so some good times, some bad times, and pretty good. Hmm, how would you describe your love life? A nightmare, pretty weird, funky, non-existent, ups and downs. I'll go with, ah, uh, I don't know. So it's hard. This quiz is not meant to be easy. Funky. Funky. Pretty weird. Pretty good. Ups and downs. I don't know. I don't know how to choose from these, these options. Ups and downs? Like everything? I don't know. Ups and downs? Ah. What should I choose? Okay, so hold on, Sam. Hold on. Don't jump ahead. Okay, I'm going to speed up because the people are going. I'll go ups and downs. Why not? Pick a wedding theme, okay? The style of your wedding. Silly hats, crazy hats, funny hats. Ooh, that sounds good. Meat. Murder mystery. So you play a game like who killed who. 
Mason jars, not sure what that means. That could be drinking, I'm not sure what that is. General whimsy, a little bit crazy, maybe. Uh, and one night at the zoo. I'm gonna go, I don't know what mason jars means. General whimsy, Whim I'm gonna go whimsy because whimsy sounds like light, a little bit crazy. And I think we're almost done here. Pick a wedding color scheme. What kind of colors would you have at your wedding? Would it be green, white, and gray? Black and white? Some crazy colors over here. Or any of these colors, I'm gonna go black and white because the other colors are crazy. So I'm just gonna go traditional for that one. And last one, this, oh, is this the last one? There's two more. I think there's, I don't know, but we're almost there, I promise, we're almost there. Pick a wedding planner. Who's gonna plan your wedding? Is it gonna be these two people? This guy, this clown, I'm not really sure why we get these options. This baby with the finger in the nose picking her boogers, probably not. This guy, probably not. Or this talkative banana. I don't really understand. I don't really understand what the purpose is here, but I'm just gonna choose Matthew McConaughey because he's not bad. He's not a bad actor, so I think he could plan an interesting wedding and he'd probably have a good toast to say because he's Matthew McConaughey. It's a weird one, right? Banana? Yeah, okay. Choose choose the clown or the banana, whatever you want. All right, and I think we're, we're nearing the end. What act, what kind of performance would you want at your reception? So after you get married and you put on the rings, you have a reception. We didn't talk about that one. A wedding reception is the, the, the big party after the wedding. So what kind of performance would you like at your reception? Would you like this guy? Don't know who that is. Is that Skrillex? I'm not sure. These weirdos. This old man band. Some artistic performance, no way. Maybe some cats? What is going on? Or this guy on the trombone? I have no idea what to answer now. I'm really lost. I might go old guy band? I don't know. Could be fun? I don't know. I'm not sure. This is weird. And last, are we at last one yet? Oh my god, we're almost there. I promise, we're almost there. Which dog would you invite to your wedding? This little dog with the top hat? Good choice, that's probably mine. This little dog with the bow tie, also very good choice. This little party dog with the party hat, the New Year's Eve hat. This dog, this little ballerina dog, or this dog with the tie. I'm gonna go top hat, because that looks like, if, if you're gonna go to a wedding and you're a dog, you might as well like do it upright and put on a top hat and look, look all awesome. So I'm gonna say dog with the top hat. Well, you gotta choose one. They're all dogs and you, only, you have to choose one. So that, that's the only, it's the only rule of this quiz. Uh, here we go. Good, last one, promise. Pick a way to express your emotion, to show your feelings. Is it lighting a big fire? It's <laughs> a good one, I like, I like big fires. So you start a big fire. Is it doing a love dance? Maybe you do a little, little love dance. I don't know how to do, that's not a love dance, but you could do that. Do a love dance. You can throw money, throw dollar bills, dollar dollar bills. You could punch a wall. How do you express your emotions? Like a man, I punch stuff. Scream and hug. I'm gonna go with hug because everybody needs a good hug sometimes. Although lighting a big fire would be pretty awesome. I'm from the countryside and we enjoy big fires. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give a big hug. I like a big hug sometimes. So go ahead, once you're done, I believe you can go down and you can submit and it will automatically, uh-oh, where am I? It didn't take me automatically this time. I want to know my answers. Where are my answers? <laughs> Where is it? Oh man. BuzzFeed, no! I did this last time and it gave me the answer. Where are my answers? Why is it not working? Do I have to sign into something? Oh no. Did everyone get their answers? Oh my goodness. Why is this not working this time? It's supposed to automatically give you the answers. Did I click all the buttons? I believe I did sacrifices to 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 general whimsy yep yep food oh we didn't choose the food I didn't choose the food did you guys choose the food maybe that's why I'm gonna go with this one because some people there we go got it you gotta make sure you touch all the boxes I skipped your right Dale that's why I didn't get it. I skipped the food one so do all of them make sure you do all of them and you will get your answer right at the bottom and here's mine so basically my perfect partner is 
I should, you got a robot programmed to <laughs> love. So basically my perfect partner is a robot with no real human emotions. Uh, you should marry a robot programmed to love. You might be skeptical, a little bit worried about love, uh, loving a robot, but just remember, a robot can give you the kind of unconditional love, total love, a person never could. If you really, truly want to be happy, you should get out there and find a very special robot to love and responsibly care for regular maintenance and upkeep. So I'm going to marry a robot which is programmed to love me just like this woman has here. Isn't that nice? I'm going to have a nice robot to love. That's very nice. So I hope you guys enjoy your answer and I hope you had an interesting one and maybe confirmed. Maybe you're already married to that love robot or maybe a merman or whatever it is. Uh, I hope, I wish you the best of luck with your new partner, whoever it is. Um, and that's about it, okay? Robot, Zara, you got a robot too? Love robot, there we go, very nice. A bot doesn't seem to be too bad, no. I mean, it'll never, it'll never cheat on you. It's programmed to love you unconditionally. So thank you very much. I'll be marrying my love robot and you are all invited to my, my love robot marriage in the future. Upkeep means take care of basically upkeep your, your car you need to upkeep your car or some kind of machine it's like keep it right keep it running good and that's basically it okay so that's it I know what I'm doing with my future click the button and you guys will have your answer and find out if you are already married to your merman or mermaid or whatever whatever the heck they do uh, enjoy that and we'll see you guys next week Wednesday at 2 p.m. and Thursday at 2 p.m. everything's at 2 p.m. now uh, and that's about it. Enjoy that about marriage. Keep talking about it. My alarm's going off. And we'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. Keep it smart. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.